So, arm ports. Uh, this is supposed to be a boff, so I've diligently not given you any fancy slides. Um, port status, uh, a little bit of background on what other people are doing. And uh, then we get to argue about Raspberry Pis and the ARM64 port are the basic subjects I think need to be discussed. So, um, as you know, we have an ARM EL port and an ARM HF port, uh, and I hope we'll have an ARM64 port soon. Um, ARM EL, for those of you who don't keep up with these exciting details, is ARM V4T instruction set, um, and EABI, and no floating point. Uh, uh, ARM HF is uh, EABI compiled for ARM version 7, and uh, VFP3, floating point instructions, uh, and THUMB2, importantly, uh, which is actually 16-bit instructions. Um, right, uh, so both those ports still exist. We have the annual question of should we change um, the Army L port to a V5 base? I, are there any V4T machines left in the world anyone cares about? Um, does anyone... Have any V4T machines they still care about in this room? V4T, which is right, of course. Okay, and I saw someone using an open mocker yesterday, so there's at least one. <laughs> um, and as far as I can tell, there is actually very little to be gained from that change, except that the GCC people have pretty much given up maintaining the 4T part. So at some point, something will probably break. Um, but until that does. I can't see much point changing things. But if anyone's desperate for that extra 3% or whatever you get, um, say so. And come here. It is on, how's it? Um, they're probably. At least in Encomium, there was some, some trouble with inline Macintosh or whatever. Yeah, so increasing, nobody else in the world builds anything for V4T, so we will find things that break. So, yes, we can save ourselves some aggravation, I think, and that will increase over time. So it's a trade off between, like, yeah, how hard is it to build Chromium versus how many people still use their open mockos. Um, have we got anyone, who, a poor soul, who has to actually make Chromium build an arm here? No? Good work, sir. Um, yeah. So I don't have any strong opinion about that. I'm inclined to leave it as it is until somebody bitches really hard. Um, but you know, increasingly, uh, I don't use my open mocker anymore. Um, it is getting to be, let's say, mostly because the toolchain people aren't taking much notice. It will become painful probably over the next couple of years. Um, so I just mentioned the other distros, just so you've got some idea. So um, Ubuntu, Fedora, and SUSE all have um, ARM HF ports, exactly the same compiler options as ours. Uh, and everybody's building ARM64 stuff too. Uh, Fedora are furthest, I think, um, with a mostly built archive. They got past QT recently, which only takes two weeks to build on a model. So it's very annoying when you get most of the way and it goes wrong. Uh, they can only build natively, so they've got thousands of models building things astonishingly slowly. Um, uh, the Ubuntu port, uh, I did a base image. We'll get onto that in a minute, actually. Um, and SUSE uh, have also got quite a lot of packages built. Um, they're using secret source, which I can't remember is still secret or not. I don't think so. I think they, they're using QEMU rather than ARM's model, which is noticeably faster. Uh, but in the way of corporateness, that's the one little advantage they've got. So they're carefully not distributing it to anybody just yet. Uh, they'll have to eventually. Um, and then there's the Raspbian people, uh, which is ARM v6, um, VFP2 floating point instructions. Um, but exactly the same ABI as everybody else. So, leaving that argument aside for a moment, uh, ARM64 port bootstrap. Um, ARM64 is going to be a big deal. Right now, today, hardware exists, but is uh, much rarer than rocking horse shit. 
I don't know how many boards there are, but I know everybody wants one, and very few people have got them. But that will change rapidly over the next um, few months. Uh, certainly next year, there'll be plenty of hardware, I hope, assuming some of it works. Um, I think there have been some issues with the very first hardware, mostly working. But I did see a demo of it running, like decomposing two movies at once inside Zen containers, and it was all very fancy and really quite fast. It does work. So uh, the Debian port of ARM64 is not at all pretty much at this stage. So I did a load of work, um, but because, basically because of the freeze and the state of multi-arch uh, and the cross-building tools, uh, I had to do it in Ubuntu, which is annoying, but such is life. Um, so there is an Ubuntu bootable image, um, which you can download and run in a model, or on some hardware if you were so lucky. Um, in Debian, we haven't even got a cross toolchain yet. I keep trying to build one, and it keeps not working. Uh, this is very annoying. Um, and if anyone would like to help, why I can't get a compiler that actually looks in user include, um, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so nothing's happened since February on that front, basically because I stopped doing it and work at Lenaro said, no, no, stop bothering with that. Um, we need you to do this other stuff instead. Uh, the distros will do it for us, they said. And I said, yeah, I bet Debian won't, you know. I think we'll find we are the distro. <laughs> um, so oddly enough, none of you stood up and spent your lives cross-building uh, ARM64 things very slowly on a model. Uh, so nothing has happened since February, apart from Doco, to be fair, actually, who has done some more stuff, but that's Ubuntu. So um, there isn't any hardware yet. We've always go, well, until there's some hardware, why should we start? Well, so there'll be some any minute now, and um, we probably need to start. So cross tool chains is the first thing. Once there's some of those, that, that's the main reason nobody's done anything. They go, well, there's no cross tool chain, and I'm not building one. When you give me one, I might do something. Um, so I realize that badly needs fixing, and I failed to do it on the train on the way down all this week real soon now. Um, what else haven't I mentioned? Uh, so there's, there's a port page which contains all this information again, but there's a bug list. There's about um, 15 ARM64 bug fixes that haven't been applied, so apply your pit patches. Um, and a big part of multi-arch patches which haven't been applied, some of them are well over a year old. Please apply those. Um, I suspect the people in this room probably have. It's all the people who aren't here who will go, I don't know what that's about, and I've ignored it. We're gone. We haven't got an ARM64 port. Why should I apply that? Um, nearly all of those patches are update your config.sub. Um, turns out that's 60% of a new port work, which is a ridiculous state of affairs, but that's how the world works. Um, Pabs has tried to fix it upstream, but uh, they've been quite resistant. Um, so yes, we need to set up a, a Debian ports box. So um, it, this has been helped by Huawei. Huawei are our best mates, it turns out. Um, they recently joined Linaro and went, where's my Debian? We want Debian. None of this Ubuntu nonsense. <laughs> uh, our customers want Debian. Um, so uh, they're, they're big and important and have said so. So suddenly, because to be fair, everyone's gone, well, you've got Ubuntu. Do you really need to do Debian work as well? We've got a lot of things to do. You know, there's, there's no shortage of breakage and software to write. Um, and also, the, the reasonable point that Lenaro is not a distribution. So um, they try not to do the distributions work. They just try and do the upstream work. How is the name of the company spelled? I'm not... Which company? L Linaro. I know how oh, to spell that. Huawei. Uh, H U W A. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> H U A W E. -E H U A W E I. Yes. Write it down. Could you just connect back to the server? Because I can see that you're asking. Oh, right, yeah. Um, no, I closed that window. I oh, think it's up here, isn't it? File. Did it work? I could see, see them online as well, couldn't I? Yep. How do we know whether it's working? It's mm. uh, well, I don't know. I click connect to server. To oh, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, Thank you. 
Gobby Scares Me or anything. You sure? Who got a copy? Not that Gobby Scares Me or anything. Oh, come on. I don't, I'm clicking. <laughs> <laughs> Can I disconnect and reconnect or something? Does that help? Disconnect from server. Subscribing, it says. Someone else could bring their laptop here that actually works. Oh, there's stuff in IRC. Is anyone watching IRC, by the way? I've just noticed people. Yeah, come on. Uh, right, where was I? Uh, yes, so Huawei have um, uh, said that they wish Debian stuff to get done, which with a bit of luck means I can get back to doing this in my day job, which means it will go a hell of a lot faster than it does otherwise. Um, who is anyone here who is specifically interested in helping make the ARM64 port happen? <laughs> We're interested that need to happen. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, okay. It's fun, honest, it's quite cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so everybody can download the free beer thing and uh, you all have hardware, it's just slow. Well, it's not infinitely slow. It's only like crappy arm boards. It's, um, oh, wow. So, uh, what else do we get to? So, uh, and the other thing that's slightly holding matters up is the build profile spec. So, um, this was mooted uh, last year by me and Johannes, and people went, ah, we don't want to use up a meta character. That would be a disaster. Please think of a different scheme. So, um, I'm not going to go into that too much detail. There's a wiki page. Um, but if anybody objects violently to square brackets instead of angle brackets, um, please say so. Um, I want, by the end of this week, anyone who's going to object to have objected, because we, we need to fix that. Um, I sent you a mail last night about how I thought we should proceed. Um, yeah, so we're slightly stuck on getting the depackage people to agree, as usual, um, because the kind of a best way to implement it means changing the dpackage API a bit, and they don't like that, which is fair enough. So we'll probably have to implement it in a slightly less flexible way, um, which would get things done. So um, the build profile stuff allows us to do bootstrapping automatically, which there is a GSOC project running again this year. Johannes is doing an excellent job of actually mentoring as my assistant mentor. Um, and Alcmim in Brazil is doing the the work, because I did an awful lot of hackery to get this done the first time, and we'd like to have an actual mechanism you run that says, please bootstrap this port from nothing, check it still works today, um, automatically unroll our circular dependencies, as I have talked about many times. So in the way of Debian, it takes three years to work out from working out how to do something to actually getting it in, but we're getting quite close, I think. Um, unfortunately, we missed getting that into Wheezy, so There'll be another cycle before we can actually use it in the archive. Um, so, yeah, the ARM64 port is there. Um, as I say, if I'm allowed to carry on working on it, I will do that. Otherwise, um, stuff will happen very slowly, and basically we get to rely on Ubuntu. It's probably easiest at this stage to actually use their bootstrap and rebuild everything. The only problem is that they're on two, GLC 2.18 now. I'm not quite sure what happens if you use a 2.18 image uh, and then try and rebuild all of Debian. Um, it's probably easiest to just move us along as well. Um, so, uh, the Raspberry Pi argument. So, there's those bloody Pi people with their stupid ARM v6 proprietary platform that irritates us all, and the best marketing machine in the world by several orders of magnitude. Um, so, they've sold millions uh, and uh, you know, we did our best to ignore them and be rude about them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, sadly, they, they didn't really work. Uh, and quite a lot of them are using Debian, effectively, because they're all running Raspbian, um, which is a fine piece of work. I should congratulate um, Messrs. Thompson and Green, I think, who've done all the work there. Sadly, they're not here. Um, but uh, hello out there on the internet. Uh, I don't know if they're watching. 
Yes, here's a plug wash. Um, so, you know, we can just carry on like this, going, well, it's not right, um, and we don't support it very well. Uh, they should run Army L. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, or we could try and do more. Uh, there are an awful lot of potential users out there uh, who are getting into the joy of um, ARM dev board fettling, uh, and might be nice to bring them a bit closer. Um, there's various ways we could do this. Uh, so um, the most obvious one, and what we always do and have done for years, is build for the lowest ISA within an ABI that is popular. Uh, hence, we still build for V4T for those open Moco weirdos, right? There's only about 12 of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, so going, oh, well, we're not going to build for Raspbian seems a bit perverse. We should just build ARMHF for V6 VFP2 without thumb. Um, it would go slower. Uh, I am not sure how much slower. Um, it would be extremely useful if somebody did some research and said, you know, is it 10%? Is it 15%? Is it 1%? Uh, the thumb two thing probably makes most difference. Actually, the ARMv6 versus ARMv7 is not a very big deal. There's a few extra instructions. The optimizations are a bit different on a v6, v7 core. Um, and I guess, uh, again, VFP3 versus VFP2 has a few extra instructions. Um, but thumb two, the code's half the size uh, for effectively the same code base. So that does save you a lot of cache pressure. And uh, is why all the phone people demanded it in the first place and why we've now made it the default. But I still don't know how much difference it really makes. Ah, here's a Colin who might actually know. Um, ah, Colin, excellent. We have a question for you already. Do we know how much faster VFP, well, RMHF as done everywhere is um, than without Thumb 2 and VFP and ARM V6? No, okay. <laughs> so, uh, it will be interesting if someone actually did some tests. Um, effectively, you just run the Raspbian binaries uh, and ours on the same box and tell us how much difference it makes. It's not very hard. It's all been, all the work is done for you. Um, now, we would then be slightly incompatible, and I'm not quite sure what sort of breakage that gets us. Uh, but anyway, so there's that option. Just build for the lowest common denominator. Um, we could uh, invent a new arch. Now, I personally think our architectures really ought to be about um, ABIs, not about instruction sets. But we could build both and call it ARMHF-V6 or something. Uh, that would work. It's not really difficult. So it's a matter of adding one line to the package, uh, rebuilding everything. Exactly, and then dealing with all the things which make V7 assumptions, because we've told the world that's the right thing to do uh, for the last couple of years. Um, or we could actually do slightly more involved things to basically make it possible to use ARMEL with VFP2, uh, so optimized binaries for things. So ARMEL allows there to be no floating point. It doesn't require there to be no floating point. Right? The whole point about the difference in the calling convention is that you can use floating point instructions if you've got a floating point unit. So um, you can make ARMEL binaries that use VFP2, uh, and they will run nicely on your box and use the floating point unit. Um, what we don't have in Debian is mechanism to, um, well, actually, you could probably just build a repository of stuff. Uh, that's right, it's, it's, it's getting dpackaged to go, oh, I've got these extra hardware capabilities, I should pick this package instead of that package. That's the piece that's always been missing to do this. And we thought about doing it a few years ago, uh, mostly in the Naro context, and went, nah, that's a lot of work, and we don't really care enough, so we never did it. I was really hoping the Raspberry Pi people would implement it that way. Uh, they had a big incentive to do it properly, but it was much easier for them to go off and rebuild it all in a different bucket call it the same thing. So that's what they did. Um, so yes, there's that. Now, the, the thing there is, does anybody care enough to do that work? Because that actually involves some work. Uh, and it will take at least a year before you get it into real Debian. Got to go through another cycle because it's a dpackage change, blah, blah, blah. So by the time they've finished, maybe we really won't care about Raspberry Pis anymore. <laughs> um, 
And yes, you could argue that anything we do, actually, maybe the world will start taking notice and start using QB boards. But I suspect there's so much momentum behind this juggernaut, it'll go on for some time. Um, or we could just, you know, let the Raspbian people do the fine job they're already doing. Um, so, does anyone have any comments or opinions on this problem? Apparently not. Hello. So I think uh, we should try to ask why was it easier for the Raspbian people to do it on the side instead of using it the Debian infrastructure so that it doesn't happen in the future? Mostly because we told them to get lost. Okay. <laughs> So that's easy to fix in the yeah. future. Well, no, we said we're not changing our base ABI, our base instruction set, because all the distros have agreed this one, and you're weird. So uh, they, they took that answer reasonably and went, OK, we won't try and do it in Debian. Um, so we could have been more accommodating in the beginning and said, oh, yeah, let's just turn it down. Um, but you know, I think the right answer probably was to say, no, we're not doing that. Um, because we've gone to a lot of trouble to get everyone to agree on a baseline. Um, so yes, that's why. There's a, there's a, there's a, it wasn't at all. It's not at all technically difficult to just rebuild ArmHF for. You know, two guys did it for yeah, yeah. most of Debian. Uh, but would it be possible to get these two guys to move it to Debian as a new architecture? Well, so as soon as it's a new architecture, that's. Um, Slightly harder because now the package has to have a new architecture added, which isn't really a new architecture; it's just a new oh, ABI, true. a new instruction set. Sorry, um, and yeah, it's not technically that hard to do that, um, but it won't be real Debian again for another release. Um, so yeah, and that's probably the easiest thing to do if we wanted to bring it inside. Um, we just tell dpackage so they'd have they'd get all their packages changed from being called ArmHF to being called um, ArmHF v6 or something, um, which they may not be that enthused about at this stage, because now it's a transition for them. Um, yeah, so I have had people emailing me saying, we really need to fix the Raspberry Pi problem. And uh, I tried using Raspbian, uh, but it's not actually that good because of things that aren't in there. Uh, so, um, I'm thinking the devices are also. Uh, we have new uh, capabilities in Debian by now regarding uh, cross threading. <coughs> um, and otherwise, we should uh, accommodate with all these PC users. And um, it should not come across as a hostile takeover of the Raspberry world, of course. We, we should be clear about that, that uh, we're, we're inviting. I think uh, ethically we we can do it. We can say, okay, um, um, HF, uh is built by default for lower instruction sets, and um, once we maybe sort the partial architecture thing out, or we have a, um, a system similar to the LIPC six uh, six eighty six or something uh, for optimizing some stuff on. on Use with a newer instruction set, um, we we can do this all within the same ABI, so to speak. Uh, so I, I think that's that's uh, thing to remember. If we compile for a slightly older um, a CPU and then uh, yes. compatible to the ABI that we have deployed in our chef and that Raspbian has deployed. Okay, so for that to happen, someone needs to do some speed tests just to see, so we have some idea of how much a hit we take there. Um, we've always, as I said, traditionally picked the lowest thing and not worried too much about the 10% speed it costs you. Um, 
it's kind of annoying going backwards, but such is life. Uh, and uh, we really ought to fix the don't have a good way of picking packages according to my hardware capabilities um, so that we could rebuild the stuff that matters for um, faster optimizations. So, you know, interesting, the x86 people have had this problem for years, and we've just hacked around it by inventing mplayer i686 um, in packaging and libc i686, which is kind of hacky, really. We should do it properly. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all very nice saying we should do it properly. Who is volunteering to uh, put hardware capability flags into dpackage? It's not very difficult. We wrote a spec at a UDS about three years ago. Um, we already have hardware capabilities in the kernel. Uh, you know, that's how the MMX or SSE or whatever it is works on x86. Do I have these instructions? So we just have the same flags in ARM. Now, at the moment, the flags the kernel uses aren't quite what you want. We'd have to, but we've already asked the kernel people, and they said, yeah, send us a list of flags. We don't care. It's easy. Um, so that's effectively the set of flags you want to store in dpackage to say this was built for these options. Does it match the options running on the box in front of me? If so, use that optimized package. And then we just have to work out how we lay out our archive, just. Sure. Uh, that, that, uh, that, would me that would mean that the architecture would be kind of a two-staged thing. So you'd have packages for, for uh, explicit, explicitly built packages for, for the different versions, or would they all go yeah, in package? Yeah, exactly. You'd, build, you'd rebuild some packages where it actually makes a detectable difference for a different instruction set or floating point option, uh, and then you'd have a mechanism. For, so it's, it's basically it's partial archives. So it's having an overlay of part of the archive so that you, can, you put both in your app sources list, and it picks them. Or we have magic in the archive, so they kind of appear as, a, as an overlay without you having to say so explicitly. Yep. So right now we are also losing the people that have hardware. Most likely they no, because they have proper hardware, which is all V7 ARMHF. They can just run ARMHF. works perfectly. Only Raspberry Pis are special and have V6 hardware. It's not, that's not true. There's um, Shiva plugs are V6, I think. Is that right? Or are they V5? V5. OK. Um, well, whatever came after a Shiva plug. A Dream plug, is that a V6? OK, well, there's a few other V6s out there. There aren't very many of them, which is why it got more or less skipped in the world of what instruction sets should we build for. So they already went back in time. Sorry, what? Uh, you missed the beginning. Open Marco people. But you're right, there's a, as I pointed out, there are many fewer of those than there are Raspbian, and we cater for that. So by the same token, we should cater for this. So, um, well. Uh, I don't care, except in principle. Uh, I'm doing ARM64 things. So um, if anyone wants to see this move forward, they will have to do some work. Um, Plugwash um, doesn't think much of a new architecture name, i.e. ARMHF-V6. So that leaves um, downgrading and having a partial archive, I think. Um, so yes. Um, what we really want, of course, is to get some of those people to come and actually do this work, because there's millions of Pi users. Some of them must be competent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, we can make them competent. They'll, they'll become competent over time, you know? Uh, that's the whole point. That's how this works. Uh, most of us didn't know how to build things for different ARM ABIs a few years ago. Um, other things, just before we run out of time. Um, ARM kernels now, there really is an ARM MP kernel which builds for multiple platforms. So we're, they're trying to make ARM world a lot more like x86 world. You will soon be getting UEFI on your boards instead of um, U-boot and crazy other weird bootloaders. Uh, actually, we've pretty much got rid of the crazy other bootloaders. Microphone, already. You'll soon be getting Grub as well. Yes, exactly. Oh, so that's landed upstream. Because... Uh, especially ARM64 is driving this, but there's already ARM32 servers. You can get a, whatever it is, 32-blade ARM server thing at great expense to stick in your rack. Um, and they want those computers to look exactly like their old computers. So UEFI and Grub for booting. 
which is actually great for us distro people because it means every board isn't different and we haven't got to have a whole lot of mechanism in DI for whatever crazy shit's needed on this particular board. Um, much as UEFI smells, um, it is at least consistent and you can do sensible things with it. Um, <laughs> Sorry, just a, just a question. In the... Um I don't know if you know the answer, but uh, in the secure boot session on Tuesday, whenever mm. it was, uh, you know, peop people observed the, the well-known thing that uh, Microsoft's uh, uh, logo guidelines for ARM uh, forbid the user from installing their own keys. Uh, now, the assertion has been of course, floating around that most people who are dealing with Linux-based ARM devices don't care about the Microsoft logo guidelines because they're on, say, a Windows Surface or something, and we don't care. Um, but uh, do you do you have any feeling for whether uh, for what people who are actually making uh, ARM-based UFE devices that we do care about are doing in this regard? Not really. So. Mo all the ones doing kind of little dev boards, uh, you know, the QB board people and, and uh, uh, EOMA PC68, whatever it is, all that sort of stuff, you know, they're not very enthused about a UEFI, really. They were quite happy right. with their U-boot, and they don't really want to have to change. And I suspect that a lot of those just aren't doing mm. secure bit at all. Exactly, and all of them could care less fine. about Windows. Although there are certainly people who care about uh, the... Secure boot when the user is in control of the keys. Indeed. So, so, so the dev board people, yeah, I guess they don't really care at all. Um, but the people making anything kind of, you know, commercial server boxes and uh, Chromebooks and that kind of stuff, I guess they do care. So, I mean, I suppose Chromebooks, you know, it's Chromebooks, Chromebooks are and Google. fairly locked down, aren't they? Well, uh, yes. I mean, and, and in some ways, it's worse. Um, you so you, there's a nice developer switch, but once you flick the developer switch, I think it deletes all your data and you have to start again. And uh, you don't have access to DRM. Okay. Uh, so once you go to developer mode, you can't play any DRM movies or files or anything, because all of that really works in Netflix or in Microsoft. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's sort of understandable. I can see well, why yeah. they were forced to uh, do that, yes. but yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. What was, was there something behind your question? Like what? Not just, really. Just just how much do we have to care about that problem, you mean? Just, just curiosity about whether our uh, assumption that it will probably be OK, that <laughs> we won't get screwed on secure boot and ARM, yeah. is I mean, I, I think the problem checking will, whether that assumption is actually the valid. The thing that's going to happen is in a couple of years' time, you'll actually be able to buy half-decent ARM laptops. I mean, a Chromebook's already quite a good laptop, apart from <coughs> having a peculiar keyboard. Uh, there will be more of that sort of thing. And, you know, those people will probably follow the Windows rules so that they, you could run Windows on it. Maybe that's how it'll ship. Uh, so all the things right. that ship and like in that, that, that we just going to That would be very unfortunate. Yeah, we're just going to be knackered for those devices. So, I mean, you know, it's like all those thousands of Windows phones and things, which basically nobody's ever been able to get booting Linux because it's too hard. Um, so, yeah, th there'll probably be quite a lot of hardware which effectively ends up in the TiVo class. Sorry. Ten minutes, right. Um, what I was wondering is, I'm not sure how much work we have to do in Debian to make multi, uh, multi device kernel, multi platform kernels work. Because so the idea is that your device supplies a device tree with its bootloader, and all you have to do is load your multi platform kernel. But right now that doesn't work because you generally don't get a device tree in the bootloader, and uh, even if you did, it would be wrong because they keep changing it. I know that I know that people have got. Uh, so I mean, we've got Calceda nodes, Calceda nodes, not nodes, uh, working on Ubuntu as our as our new buildies. Uh, I don't know what their bootloader setup was and how much effort was involved there. Uh, I believe that they did work with essentially the distro multi-platform kernel. So there's there's some hope there. I think. Right. Yes, I mean, that work is ongoing in Lenaro. We're all trying to make this work so that there's actually uh, a very small number of kernels. And from Debian's point of view, this is marvelous. You know, we'd, we don't have to build 15 ARM kernels. That makes our kernel build much faster. Now, of course, we'll soon have super fast ARM hardware, so we won't care so much anymore. But um, it's all good. Um, but there's probably some work involved in making it. Well, so at least for OMOP, it's important anyway because they shut off their old support, so they need device tree even without the multi-platform kernel. 
Right. So. Okay. But so if you buy so if you buy BeagleBone Black, does it come with a device tree that actually works with an arbitrary kernel? Anyone tried it? Okay. We don't know. Um, I probably know someone in Lenaro who knows. I guess I should ask them. Um, uh, before I run out of time, I should mention there's going to be a mini DebConf in November at ARM's offices in Cambridge. Um, Mr. McIntyre has made this happen, and ARM are coughing up some facilities and money. So uh, there's a wiki page there. Uh, so far, me and Steve are going. So if somebody else would like to come, please sign up. Uh, <laughs> So we probably need some talks and stuff. Attempt to quadruple the, uh, the attendance in uh -huh. five minutes. Attempt to quadruple the attendance. Yes, exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a mini DebConf. Um, please come along and uh, give interesting talks. Uh, it'll be four days, two at the weekend, two during the week. So, um, uh, basically, we, we get kind of a room during the, the two days it's at work. And on the weekend, basically, we can f fill um, the atrium place at arm, which is very nice. Um, and yeah, it should be cool. So I guess there will be a focus on the army things and this kind of subject. Please, microphone over there. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, if you need funding to be able to attend, just talk to me. Cool. We're hoping to make arm pay for it all. But I think, I think they said they wouldn't pay for the food or something. So I'm not sure. There, there's some bits. But, um, they've got pots of money. They really ought to be able to afford to pay for our mini DebConf. Uh, I've seen the figures. Um, <laughs> they don't charge very much for each chip, but they have sold a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there anything I've forgotten? We have five minutes. Uh, is anybody actually going to do anything about the Raspbian problem? Any volunteers? Looks at IRC. Okay, well, uh, it might change, it might not, I guess. Come back next year for... Um, Uh, yeah, I've I've read that. Unless it's changed. Um, uh, well, I would say it, it excludes one of the options for how we might change things, which would be invent a new architecture called um, HFv6, uh, even though that's quite an easy option. <laughs> uh, they're saying they don't fancy that much, which is fair enough. I wouldn't either at this point. Um, I guess the other thing we didn't really cover was if we could do more for Raspbian, just leave things as they are with this sort of external port, because uh, then we don't have to change any infrastructure anywhere, um, but just pretend it's more like real Debian. Um, you know, it's a derivative. <coughs> I see. Uh, instructions that you are, how would you, how would you go about that? Would we uh, prepare everything in, in a port and ask FTP masters to move it over? I think you, you, you just rebuild each package as you go along. Uh, Ubuntu have gone back from v7 to v5, so they can probably tell us just what breaks. No. <laughs> Uh, so that was that was for our ARM EL port, yeah. which probably shouldn't have been bumped up to V7 in the first place, but it was before ARM HF existed, uh, and uh, some uh, companies you might be familiar with were <laughs> pestering us about it. Um, the so we decommissioned the ARM EL port, our ARM EL port in. Uh, uh, in raring, that's 13.04. So 13.04 and onwards do not contain RMEL. But we thought that before we did so, it might be quite nice to uh, back rev it to, uh, uh, to ARMv5, uh, ARMv5ET, I believe. Uh, so Quantal Men, uh, so 12.10 Men, uh, we rebuilt everything uh, in in the main components, so just sort of supported packages uh, against uh, for ARMv5 ET, uh, with the intention that people who wanted to start from there and do something useful might be able to do so. Of course, they're stuck in an unsupported 
release. So, or well, uh, soon to be going out. By and large, things not too many things broke. But some, some by and large, it, it seemed to work. It's quite hard to tell because nobody was using it anymore. Yeah. So I guess the problem, actually, from our point of view, is if we use our standard mechanisms, we don't get a rebuild until we get a new upload. You can bin a, bin enemy right. a batch of stuff. Okay, so you just I bin mean, anybody who want to build access can do that. Right. So. So yeah. So I mean, the point is, it's you could just rebuild as you go along because it's forward compatible. All these binaries will still work, just a tiny bit slower. Um, so yeah, you just rebuild the whole damn thing until you've finished. Um, some of those builds will, in fact, if done on a, a V7 machine, which they will be, um, will come out wrong. They haven't actually gone back to V6 because uh, they ignored the compiler defaults and set their own. Uh, and you know, we'll have to catch all those. Um, but it's not hard to. I think some tools have already been written to just run through and, and look for V7 instructions. So you just run it through another Lintian check that says, does this have instructions it shouldn't have? So technically, it's not at all difficult to do that part. The technically difficult part is the um, being able to partially you know, do rebuild some of the archive as it is now uh, for optimization purposes and have both available to someone. We don't have that capability at the moment. The package couldn't care less about instruction sets, optimizations. Yeah, I mean, it, it will work for libc and mplayer because they've done it in the packaging. I don't know what else, how many other packages have bothered. Um, so, doesn't it make sense for the libc browser to start all the way around and say uh, we copy um, the builds that we have at the moment, uh, start with Jim and instruction sets to the fourth street so that people who want to play with the more performance stuff uh, have, have just another um, another tree that they can access. Could do that, I suppose. It's easy. And why not use the runtime selection that you see offer? Yes. Just like OpenMap with Elvis with on many architectures, you can compile for uh, different hardware and choose the one they want. So you only need to have uh, for the optimized file with uh, multiple versions into the package. Yes. But I guess even for ARM, um, uh, the. So it's true that there is a functionality called ifunc in uh, libc, which allows you to build multiple versions of a function and then it will choose at load time. I think uh, once which one it should use for this hardware. Uh, so effectively, it's kind of fat binary thing. So you haven't got two copies of the binary, you've got two copies of some functions. Uh, the problem mostly is that you have to rewrite your software to use that and do multiple builds with different options when you build it. But yeah. Anyone can do that anywhere. That already works. So you don't need any Debian infrastructure for it. This way, you just have to compile two times uh, in the package uh, and install it to the right location and not even change anything. Uh, and the so that's using multi lib. Docker can tell us how hard that is. You, you just have to change the packaging for every package. <laughs> <laughs> well, every package that benefits from uh, the cleanup. Yes. So you're right. Um, uh, that could be done too. Uh, and maybe it's not even craziness. Uh, <laughs> um, we've run out of time. Sorry. Um, thank you very much. Um, oh, before everyone goes, how many people think we should downgrade ARMHF to V6? One, two, three. Okay, a few. Uh, how many people think we definitely shouldn't? <laughs> More. About twice as many. Okay, so um, we're not entirely persuaded, um, but there is some thought that maybe we should, who thinks we should do something <laughs> to be nice to the Pi people? Okay, so we would like to be nice to the Pi people, but we're not sure how. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>